Good morning once again. <clears throat> um, yesterday we dealt with the light reactions. Today I just want to focus on one particular aspect of the light reactions, the last stage of photosynthesis. And this is the aspect that has to do with the formation of ATPs, um, a process called photophosphorylation. Um, which normally takes place when electrons are moving between photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. In other words, in this area here. I'm going to move to a slide that will help us to understand the chemiosmosis process. Um, that tries to explain how these ATPs are formed using the energy from the sun. Yes, this is who we are. A different slide. Um, photosystem 2 here, photosystem 1 there. Um, remember, um, this is the membrane of the thylakoid. You can see a phospholipid bilayer showing the membrane of a thylakoid. There it's a thylakoid expanded here to be something like this. This side is the thylakoid space. The other side is the stroma matrix. Remember, thylakoids are found inside the chloroplast. So this side is the stroma matrix, whereas this side is the thylakoid space. So this is what happens. As electrons are moving from one electron carrier to the other, all the way from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1, these electrons um, lose the energy that they were having bit by bit and apparently that energy is used to pump hydrogen protons from the stroma matrix the other side of the membrane to the thylakoid space which is on the other side of the membrane so you can see the hydrogen protons being moved from the thylakoid, the, the stroma matrix, I mean to say, through the thylakoid membrane into the side, other side of the thylakoid membrane, which is the thylakoid space. This will result in, if the hydrogen protons keep on being moved from the thylakoid, from the stroma matrix into the thylakoid space, you will create a situation whereby in the thylakoid space you have got more hydrogen protons than you have on the stroma matrix. So you will end up having more hydrogen protons on the thylakoid space than you will have on the stroma matrix. This will create an imbalance on the charges having more hydrogen protons on the thylakoid space and less hydrogen protons on the stroma matrix um, this will create what is called a gradient a proton gradient a gradient is a situation where you have got more of something on one point and less of the same thing on the other point so it's always from high to low that's what a gradient is. So in this particular case, we end up having more hydrogen protons in the thylakoid space than in the stroma matrix, which was not the case before. This situation of more hydrogen protons in the thylakoid space and less in the stroma matrix is created by the energy, which is coming from these electrons, which originates from the sun. This energy resulting in 
the pumping, the movement of these hydrogen protons um, from the stroma matrix to the thalakoid space. We might assume initially there was a balance between the stroma matrix and the thalakoid space. Equal number of hydrogen protons on both sides. Now, having created that, if you want to create that balance back between the stroma matrix and the thalakoid space, you need to move these hydrogen protons that have been pumped into the thalakoid space back into the stroma matrix. But the problem is one, hydrogen protons do not easily move through the membrane. They do not easily move the membrane because they've got charges they will be trapped within that thylakoid membrane. If I can just try and explain how it was possible for them to move here, you can see those hydrogen protons immediately when they are, this plastic union here will shuttle and come close to the membrane there. As it receives an electron, it takes the two hydrogen protons and that becomes hydrogen gas attached to this plastic union. Then this plastic union shatters to the other end of the membrane. And when it is on the other end of the membrane, that hydrogen gas, the hydrogen gas can move because it has got no charges. That hydrogen gas is split back into two electrons and two hydrogen protons. The protons are dumped into the thalakoid space, whereas the electrons are moved to the next electron carrier continuing on their journey to photosystem one. I hope that is clear. So that is basically the role that plastic union plays in picking up hydrogen protons from the stroma matrix, dumping them to the thylakoid space, making it possible for, for them to move across the membrane after the hydrogen protons have combined with electrons and converted into a hydrogen gas, which is just on the other end of the membrane, that gas is split back into protons and electrons. Now, luckily, if you are to move these hydrogen protons that are so many in the thylakoid space now, back into the thylakoid space, in the, into the stroma matrix, we need to find um, a way, and likely on this membrane, there is an enzyme, you can see the enzyme here, which is called the ATPase enzyme. Um, so that enzyme, it's embedded within the membrane. Within it, it has got a channel, a pore that can allow these hydrogen protons to move through it. So these protons can move through here, they can move through there, but they can move through this channel that you see here. The channel created by the membrane ATPase. So each and every time you have got more of something on one end and less of something, there is potential energy there. So here, even in this case, because you've got more hydrogen protons on the thylakoid space and less on the stroma matrix, there is potential energy there. Um, so as soon as these hydrogen protons start to move from where they are more to where they are less, each time they are moving, that energy, that potential energy that is there, it's unlocked. That energy is released. And likely that energy is going to be used by the ATP ACE enzyme to attach a phosphate group to ADP, forming ATPs here. So, these ATPs are going to be used during the Calvin cycle. The NADPHs that are formed there are also going to be used during the Calvin cycle. That's why you see these arrows pointing to the Calvin cycle and another arrow also pointing to the Calvin cycle. So, hydrogen protons will keep on moving from the thylakoid space back into the stroma matrix until there's a balance between the two sides in terms of the concentration of the hydrogen protons. And 
when that balance is reached, that potential energy that was there is no longer there. So each and every time, initially when there, the, there's a big difference, there's more energy, the more the region protons are moving and the difference is getting less and less on two sides, the energy is being used, 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 or released, 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 used by this enzyme until there's no energy uh, that can be released anymore because the balance between the two sides is reached. Um, but that will create, that will create, that will result in a situation whereby phosphate group is attached to ADP forming ATP in a process called photophosphorylation. That is adding a phosphate group to ADP in a process that requires light, light energy, photons. So this is the chemi osmosis process uh, that tries to explain the formation of ATPs. Thank you.